Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Olumide Makoli. On the program today... The British military boosts the capacity of troops in the Northeast, concludes training of 206 officers and men of the Nigerian Air Force in Kaduna. The Nigerian Army rescues 1,880 civilians during operations in Sambisa Forest in one week. And the Borno State Government allocates more for education in the 2017 budget. We begin with security in the Northwest. The Kaduna State Government has extended the 24-hour curfew earlier imposed in Jema local government area on two more councils, Zangon Kataf and Kaura local government areas. In a statement issued at the end of a state security council meeting, the state government explains that the decision is based on credible intelligence about threats to lives and property in the affected areas. It also reaffirms the ban on all processions and on lawful assembly throughout the state and mandated security agents to arrest and prosecute any individuals or groups that violate the orders. Residents of Kafanchan in Jema local council defied the curfew order and took to the streets for days to protest attacks on their communities by herdsmen, resulting in the destruction of property. And in the northeast, the Nigerian military seems not to be resting on its oars in spite of the successes recorded thus far in the fight against Boko Haram. As part of the ongoing efforts at boosting the capacity of troops, 206 officers and men of the Nigerian Air Force have concluded counterinsurgency operations field training conducted by the United Kingdom military. The six-week exercise was held at the Air Force Regiment Training Center in Kaduna State in northwest Nigeria. This is a reenactment of what happens on the war front, where soldiers put their lives at risk to protect their country. The four-week training is for 206 Nigerian Air Force personnel by a team from the United Kingdom. Comprising fast roping, which is a helicopter drop demonstration, marksmanship, camouflage and concealment, fitness exercises, and evacuation of the wounded. They were taught how to react to direct and indirect fire, how to deal with improvised explosive devices, how to locate intruders, how to conduct post-attack recovery, and how to screen and search people and vehicles and how to build, and more importantly, fight out of defensive positions. The representative of the Chief of Air Staff is impressed with the outcome of the program. We can confidently say that our goals and set objectives are being achieved. What we have witnessed today is a sure demonstration and testimony that the products of this center have been adequately prepared for deployment to any of the operational theaters across the country. The certificates are handed to the soldiers, but what they should have at the back of their minds is that what they have learned today may be what will save their lives on the battlefront tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Nigerian army says troops have cleared most parts of the Sambisa forest of Boko Haram members, rescuing a total of 1,880 civilians between December the 14th and the 21st. That's according to the theater commander of Operation Lafia Dole, Major General Lucky Rabo, who told journalists in Maiduguri 
the Bornu State Capitol that over 500 suspected Boko Haram members were arrested during the operations. According to him, 600 rounds of ammunition were recovered in a plastic container buried in a river around the Grandje area of Maiduguri. And while the military continues to flush out insurgents from the northeast, the anti-bomb command of the Nigeria police says it's set to help the bombings being experienced in the area, help in preventing it, that is. The Commission of Police Anti-Bomb Squad, Haruna Mishela, told the explosives ordnance commanders from across the country in Lagos to be prepared for the assignment. One of the recent attacks by Boko Haram's sect in Meiduguri, the Bornu state capital. The various attacks on millions of Nigerians in the northern part of the country has displaced many, with majority seeking refuge in camps in various parts of the country. To this end, senior anti-bomb officers and commanders across the country converged on Lagos to chart a new course in combating terrorism in the new year. Everything is working fine. So far, so good. And by the grace of God, just as the president said, we are seeing the end of Boko Haram by 2017. A display of some of the newly acquired counter-terrorism gadgets for the command. An effort by both government and international collaborators to end this menace, which the field officers say is a possible task. We, have, we are enjoying a serious relationship with the sister agencies, particularly the military. They do the halting. When they see the suicide bombers, they halt them. And during halting, neutralization may happen, whereby they will be rendered, you know, they, 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 they will be lifeless. Then we are, we are coming to play the remaining part of it, which means we have to, you know, take care of the devices on them. The explosives we use in this country are not all manufactured here in Nigeria. Rather, they are being imported. So if we are able to effectively control the availability of this material, then automatically, indirectly, we have been able to put a stop to how these things will get to the hands of the wrong users who are the terrorists. According to the 2015 Global Terrorism Index, Nigeria is ranked third of the 162 countries of the world after Iraq and Afghanistan and first in countries of Africa that has been worst hit by terrorist attacks. No doubt the various attacks by insurgents have kept security agencies in Nigeria on their toes since their first attack in 2009. With a redoubled effort and collaboration among security agencies, Nigerians can look forward to an end to the attacks. And staying with security, Rear Admiral Opoche Suleiman, Commander Joint Task Force Operation Delta Safe, and his team have promised to fish out criminals from the Niger Delta region, especially as it affects oil and gas facilities. He was speaking in Asaba during a courtesy call on the governor, Dr. Ifan Yokoa. Go strictly by that mandate, which is to protect the oil and gas infrastructure, deter, prevent other criminality, including crude oil theft. We shall not go to any community that is not involved in criminality. Or if you are involved in criminality, you have lost the immunity. We shall fish out all the criminals. And as Bornu State gradually tries to put the years of insurgency behind it, the state governor, Mr. Kashim Shatima, has announced the highest allocation of 33 billion naira to the reconstruction of schools destroyed by Boko Haram insurgents and fresh construction work across the educational institutions in the state. Presenting the 183 billion naira appropriation for the 2017 fiscal year, Governor Shatima says the proposal targets consolidation, restoration and rebirth with 59 billion naira allocated for recurrent expenditure. The health sector trailed education with 19 billion naira, while reconstruction, rehabilitation and resettlement got 13 billion naira, with agriculture trailing with the allocation of 7 billion naira. The governor notes that education was worst hit by attacks of Boko Haram, maintaining that his administration is taking a major step to fix education in the state. 
We are watching news across Nigeria. Coming up in the southwest, the Ogun State government disburses outstanding gratuities to pensioners and other public service workers. Stay with us.